So today I wanted to take some time and go over how to get into Star Citizen, what it is, where it is in its development cycle, and take you guys from hitting the website for the very first time all the way to getting in game and any problems that arise in between. This video is going to show new players how to get into the game for as little money as possible without having to spend a thousand dollars or hundreds of dollars on big ships and it's going to primarily focus really on where the game is in development right now and not where it's going or where it's been we can discuss those in later videos and i would be glad to do so especially if you guys let me know what you want to talk about in the comments below but for right now at least we're going to take you guys from like I said, from the website to in game and get a good glimpse of where the game is right now for a brand new player just coming out of the gate. If that sounds interesting to you, hit that like button and stay tuned because here we go. We're at the title page and we're going to go ahead and click join the universe. If you see start the adventure and think that's where you need to click, this is for Squadron 42. Is not playable now, so just ignore that. We're gonna click join the universe. You're gonna have lots of interesting information here. Feel free to read through it, look through all this information. It's, it's pretty cool stuff. I mean, for a lot of us, we already know it all, but um, for new players, I'm sure this is pretty intriguing. You're gonna get down to where you can pick one of two packages. I'm gonna go over and compare these two ships so that way you can understand which ship is better for you. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. All right, so you may be asking, what is the difference between an Aurora MR and a Mustang Alpha? The Aurora MR is made by Robert Space Industries. It is primary goal is multi-role. Um, it's more of a light utility, light freighter. It can haul a little bit. It's got a bunk in it so you can sleep in where the Mustang Alpha is made by Consolidated Outland, that is more based around combat and maybe more militia work. So kind of keep that in mind when we're discussing both these vehicles and which path you want to go. Because the, they can kind of flex both a little bit. So there's that too. The Mustang Alpha is a little bit bigger than the Aurora. It's a little bit longer, a little bit wider, and a little bit taller. Weighs more and it's faster and the big thing here is the scm speed 195 versus 255 meters per second so the mustang alpha is going to be faster however it's afterburner it's top afterburner speed when punching it is slower this is important because that means the aurora is better at getting places faster and potentially getting away if need be you know things like that both one person ships and as usual the mustang which is designed for fighting is going to be a little bit more maneuverable they both have size small components for the most part nothing fancy there they're starter ships where this really comes into play more or less is the weapons so the weaponry on the aurora is going to be as shown here two m3a laser cannons and two size ones additional so you can add those later, but so essentially four size one laser cannons and then two marksman size one missiles. The Mustang not only has the two size ones, but it also has a turret with two size twos on it. This is more important because you, you have better range of gimbling. You have more uh, combat plus size twos aren't terrible so you've got better guns but you lose out on the missiles so really when looking at these ships you need to decide do i want to go in guns blazing focus on combat doing patrol missions and things like that or do i want to be able to flex what i do have more experience do i want to haul a little bit of cargo but at the same time be able to take a delivery mission and then maybe go do a patrol mission every once in a while so you really need to decide on that, which way you go. Either way, they're both good ships. You're probably not gonna sit around in them for a long time. Most citizens upgrade up to something like the Avenger, which can basically do everything at once. And it's only $60 for the, I think 60 or 65 for the package. It, it's really not that bad, but 
Just keep that in mind and we'll go ahead and move on from here. All right, so from here, we're gonna go ahead and pick the Aurora MR. Whichever one you pick, it's, the, it's gonna take you to the same screen. Now, it's gonna describe what comes in each package at this point. So for the Mustang Alpha and the Aurora, it's gonna be the same stuff. So I'm just gonna show it here. You get the ship, you get a basic self-land hangar, which is more of like an industrial style hangar. The hangers don't really mean anything. It's just a, right now, at least a place for you to look at your ships. You get a thousand UEC. It's not really worth that much. Um, a thousand UEC is really low. However, if you are new to the game and you use my referral code, which I'll have in this video and down in the description and type that in before you sign up, you'll actually get an additional 5,000 UEC. So that'll put you at 6,000 UEC. So keep that in mind. You'll get three months of insurance and then the game. This does not include Squadron 42. You will be able to add it lower down in this page. And the three months insurance is on the hull of the ship. So it's gonna be basically what comes out of the factory. So the ship, it's stock weapons and stock components. It will not cover any upgrades you have once the game launches. This three month insurance has no bearing until this game comes out. So if this game comes out next year, it'll start or if it comes out in 10 years, it won't start until then. So it's not too big of a deal right now. However, later down the line, it might become more of a concern. That being said, CIG does do war bond only starter packages. And every once in a while, they'll do like once a year, they'll do these big 10 year insurance packages as well. So keep that in mind. That's another thing. But generally, these two are the way that you're going to get into the game 99% of the time, unless a special promotional deal is running at that time. So we're going to go ahead and select the Aurora MR. It's going to ask you, do you want Squadron 42? Okay, so now we're going to get into what the heck is Squadron 42. For those who don't know, Squadron 42 is going to be a around 100 plus hour campaign, fully scripted with crazy voice actors like Mark Hamill, Gary Oldman, Henry Cavill, John Rice Daves, and all these big voice actors and, and regular actors and stuff. This will have a bearing on you in the in the multiplayer world. You're gonna play through the campaign. If you do, you're gonna come out as a military veteran in the world. And this is going to open up opportunities such as being able to get the F8 Lightning, which is a heavy fighter, and other various things that we don't quite know about. So it's worth picking it up here for $20. You're basically getting an entire another game, but this is completely optional and completely up to you. So next we're gonna hit enlist now. Okay, so from here, we're gonna put in our information. You will have your login ID. This is going to be what you put in the launcher and on the website to log in. This is not something you will ever share with anybody. And it is not going to be something anybody can see. So make it something unique that only you will know. Of course, you're going to have your passwords, your email, and your birth date. Now, your handle and your community moniker. There's, I don't really get why there's two of these, but basically this is what people are going to see when they're in game. This is going to be what people see when you're on Spectrum, which is like the forms, and when you're in game itself. So the, these are changeable. The community moniker can be kind of changed when you need to. However, the handle requires uh, special tokens. This right here is the referral. This is where you are going to put in the referral code I, I mentioned down in the description. This is where you're gonna put it in and get that free 5,000 UEC. It also helps me out by upping the amount of referrals I have. So if you wanna help me out and also help yourself out, you know, there you go. Then you're gonna type in this ridiculously hard to see security token and click stay informed from there you're going to click enlist now so this is going to bring you to your normal purchasing go through purchase the item and then from there i'm going to show you where to go next i'm not going to make a new account and, and buy another package because i already have that so we're going to go ahead and skip to the next step from here all right so we finally made it to the point where we get to actually download the game so in this instance we are going to have download Star Citizen. You need to make sure your RSI account is valid, your game package is valid, and all of these 
boxes are lit up green. If they are, you should be good. You should be able to hit download installer. You're going to click that, download the game, or download the installer. Once the installer is done and complete, then you need to log in and actually download the game. This is a pretty sizable download and make sure to install it on your SSD if you have one. Once you have that done, you're logged in and you hit play, I will meet you in game. So I will see you there. All right, so we've made it in game. Hopefully it's running all right for you guys, but now we're gonna be able to build our character. It's kind of a limited system here where we have to pick between two people and then blend accordingly. You can change hair, um, skin tone, all that type of stuff to fit how you want your character. And generally you're just gonna pick two, two of the characters and then you use this slider to kind of mix and match and, and move them in between. So I'm just gonna leave my character about like this. We're gonna jump into the game. All right, so I have spawned in. I do not believe I currently have a body at this moment. So we're gonna try and remedy that while I show you the basics. So if you hit the F1 key, that is should bring up your Moby Glass. I do not have a Moby Glass. Well, I'm gonna have to reset my character and then we'll continue on with this tutorial. All right, so I had to reset my character and just in case you guys run into this as well, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do this so that way you don't have to worry about this frustration too much. What you're gonna do is you're gonna to come to the RSI website. You're gonna to go to your account. You're gonna click on this, this button up here. You're gonna hit settings and it's gonna bring you to this page. Well, the overview page. You're gonna hit character reset. Then you're gonna come down here and click on this reset character or request reset. Mine's grayed out because I've already done it. It's gonna take you about 15 minutes. The, the, your account will be locked. You won't be able to log in the game but it shouldn't reset anything too crazy. It'll get you unstuck, reset how your character looks and where he's located. In my case, I've been able to keep uh, items that I've bought and the money I've earned in the game. I don't know if that's for everybody though. Other than that, I will get back to the review as soon as this time limit is up. All right, so we're in. So far, so good. I've got a body, I can look around. Everything looks great. So this is going to be new Babbage. So from here, once you're laying down, you're just gonna hit the W key and your character will stand up. These are the little apartment buildings that we're gonna be able to rent and own. It'll be really cool once they get in um, the player just persistence fully and we can actually own places. These will be very important because as you can see clothing and items around here, this will be where you actually have to store stuff because in this game, there is going to be uh, physicalized inventory. So if you take off your helmet or put your gun away, it won't just go into a magic bag of holding. You will actually have to store it somewhere. So having these places will be important because your ships can be destroyed, but these can't. So now that we're done looking around here, I'm just gonna do a quick pan so you guys can see how cool these, this place is. And you can kind of see new Babbage out here. Cool little uh, bathroom and know why that vents there but yeah next we're gonna go to hitting the f1 key hitting the f1 key will open up your uh moby glass this will tell you how much who you are of course your how much money you have what your current crime stat is and various you know nitrogen o2 all that stuff but all, very importantly how much oxygen you have left in your suit how much eva fuel you have all that type of stuff Next tab, Vehicle Loadout Manager. This is going to be where you can customize your ships. So in this cl this case, I'm just gonna pick, let's say a Gladius to show you that you can choose between swapping out your missiles, your quantum drive, uh, coolers, power plants, weapons, and even paint skins. So that's just kind of here. Next is gonna be your Equipment Manager. If you want to wear normal clothing, you need to come in here, click on undersuit and click unequip. This will give you normal clothing. However, you will still have this ridiculous little hat on. The way to get rid of that is to unequip your helmet first, then unequip your undersuit and then you won't have the little, little hat anymore. 
So that's that. You're gonna have various levels of armor and utility. The one thing you will want to stock up on, no matter what, whether you're combat or not, is med pins. Make sure you have ample supply of med pins because this game likes to damage you randomly and you wanna be able to heal yourself and not bleed out and die. Next, the star map. So you're just gonna zoom in real close like this. You're just gonna use your scroll wheel back out. You're gonna keep going out, keep going out, and then you'll get to the whole solar system. So this is the whole solar system. This is all the gameplay area we have now. We can't go to other solar systems just yet. That'll be coming down the line. If you wanna plot a, a location or a, a route, just go from where you're at it'll, and click on somewhere new. So say you wanna to go to Delamar, you click that, hit set route, and once you're in a ship, it'll actually draw a line there and you'll be able to go there. Next, journal. So this is really just gonna tell you all the little things about all the lore bits. So that if, if you like lore bits, this is where to get that information. If you don't really care about lore, this isn't really that important. However, if you go down to the jurisdiction section, you can see for the United Earth Empire, this covers everywhere. These are what the felonies and misdemeanors are and what the fines are. So keep an eye on these because these are illegal. Also, what the prohibited goods are that you can get in trouble for trying to smuggle in. Now, if we go to Microtech, they have slightly different laws than the UEE. So they may have more strict laws. So know what planet you're on and what the laws there are. Liveworks AR, this really doesn't do much. Uh, it's supposed to be modifying ship point equipment. Um, next, if you're on your landing pad, you've got the ability to restock, repair, and refuel. This is only applies if you're on a ship, on a landing pad, and contracts manager. This is probably how you're gonna make most of your money. You're gonna have these delivery missions. You're gonna have investigation missions for um, if you wanna go like look into things and be a detective. Bounty hunter missions if you wanna go after those bounties. And then mercenary missions, which are mostly just gonna be fighting pirates and stuff like that. You'll have some personal missions here and then we can go into what you've accepted history what you've so what you've done and if any players have put out beacons so that's kind of the moby glass in its entirety other than that you do need to eat and drink at this point in the game so make sure when you go to the stores and things stock up on food stock up on water so that way you don't just die immediately some other little tips are if you use your scroll wheel you can increase the speed at which you walk. If you notice, you can go down to a normal pace. When walking on ships, sometimes you can get sucked out if you're running and sprinting around. You do not want to be sprinting around constantly on ships. So try and not use that shift key. Try and keep it at a more walk, more reasonable walk pace. Other than that, I'm gonna go into more detailed overviews of ships, uh, starting sequences, landing, combat. Um, I'm gonna bring in some of the top FPS players. Uh, well, it used to be uh, like Major Surge and Flat King. They used to dominate the leaderboards, potentially Big Daddy as well. And they can talk about FPS tips and tricks that they wanna share. Uh, well, basically any of that stuff. And give me suggestions down in the comments. And if you're interested, there's also a Discord link down there. You can share your suggestions there. Other than that, like, comment, those really help me out. Hit that subscribe button if you wanna see more Star Citizen content. I also do Hell at Loose content. I stream Mondays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays at 8.30 Central Time. So if you wanna come hang out, I'll see you there. Other than that, uh, have a great day.